Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So we're gonna make this guy today. Um, it's my ballerina bunny, so you're gonna need some tule. Um, these shoes are all crocheted. The arms are crocheted on, the legs are crocheted on, and the ears are all crocheted on. I got some tule at the top for a bow. Um, this video is gonna be long, so I decided to put chapters in it, and the chapters will be listed in the description box below with the timestamp. Let's jump right into this. So we um, start off with red because that's going to be my shoe color. So whatever shoe color that you're going to have. We start off with a magic ring. We put six single crochets in there. Round one is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. So after the first stitch, that's where your marker goes, not the second stitch. <clears throat> Round two is going to be one single crochet and an increase. That's one single crochet. And then your next stitch gets the increase, which is two single crochets in the same space. So repeat that all the way around. For the next six rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is what my six rows gets me. Um, now I'm going to change <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to change to my rabbit color, which for me is brown. So I'm going to back out of half this stitch here because I like to do my color change in the stitch before. So I'm going to get my brown and I'm going to finish my last red stitch with my brown. So I take my brown straggler and I just tie it to my red. I am not going back to red. So red's just gonna get weaved in a bit and then cut off. Um, I don't wanna really have to worry about anything coming undone and that's why I do what I do. So, shove everything down in there. So this is what your slipper is gonna be. A little ballerina slipper. So after you change your color, your next row is going to done. Actually, I'm not going to weave in my red, so I tied it. Uh, your next round is going to be done in the back loops only. So these are your back loops. They're standing right up. Don't need to turn anything over. I want you to put one single crochet in each stitch around. You still have 18 stitches in the back loops only. We're going to be using the front loops for something else. And it will separate, help separate your, your shoe from your leg. Now, 
we are going to be coming back to the red to do a little border around the shoe but for now you can just snip it off we aren't going to need it for the rest of the project we will reattach later to do what I want to do around the top of the shoe so let's just continue with the leg your next round is going to be which is going to be round 10 it's going to be four single crochets decrease you're going into the whole stitch this bunny is going to be a lot bigger than my other bunny because I'm using different yarn. So that's number one. That's four single crochets. And then I'm going to do invisible decreases. And that's going to be done in the front loops only. So go into your front loop first stitch, go into your front loop in the second stitch, yarn over, pull through, finish the stitch. You don't have to do that you can do your regular decrease if you're not comfortable with that so do that all the way around and this will give you 15 stitches when you're done so for the next 24 rows I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. So hopefully you have a row counter like me or some way of counting. And I will see you on the other side. Don't forget to stuff as you go. So this is my 24 rows. Um, so you can fasten off at this point and um, I'll show you um, what I'm gonna do down here. We'll, we'll complete this leg in its entirety. Then I'll leave you t with the pattern on the screen to go make your other one. So um, you're going to need your red again because I'm going to put a border on the bottom of this shoe just to make it look like a, you know, a ballerina shoe. So let's fasten off. Um, these legs are being crocheted into the bunny, just like the arms and the ears. So you just need a little bit of a sewing tail. You don't need like a huge a huge pile. I do want you to kind of go through the next stitch backwards and then pull this through. It just makes this part look better. So take my thing off. Let's get a red and reattach. So this is my favorite um, trim stitch and I thought I would use it at the top of the shoe because it is such a cool, it's a, such a cool stitch. So first of all, reattach before we start. So you can reattach any which way you want if you wanted to do a single crochet. I'm just gonna reattach with a single crochet. So, I'm going to go back into the same stitch to start my stitches, but I want you to pull up a little bit on that. So make your, lo your loop on your hook a little loosey-goosey. Go back into the same stitch, pull up a loop. Pull that up too, so extended stitches. You're going to twist, you're going to yarn over, and you're going to pull through that twist. But as long as you pull up on everything properly, it's not going to be tight. So pull up on this loop before you go into the next stitch. So you're going into the front loops of when we did the back loops. That's what you're going into. And that's why we did that. So pull up a loop and extend it. So pull up, twist it, and then finish the stitch. Pull up on that loop. So the most important part about this stitch and how it affects how it looks too is 
pulling up on this loop will affect what this looks like as well as make it a lot easier for you to twist it and then pull through. So that's the important part of the stitch, pulling this loop up. Not necessarily the other one, but you still need to pull the other one up to get the height. So easy peasy stitch, I want you to do all the way around in those front loops. And this makes it really look like a little ballerina snipper. So when you come back around, and I know this, because we're doing an amigurumi, this is higher, but you won't even notice it after. So there's not really a stitch you can get into here, except for that first initial stitch that we did. So I'm gonna go into that, which is right there. You can go anywhere you want, actually. I gotta pick up a couple more pieces, so maybe not. Do your slip stitch, sorry. I'm, I can't seem to stay on camera when it's zoomed in like this. So fasten off, we're gonna tie these two together. So just need a little bit of a tail. So take these two, we're gonna do a very tight double knot. And then we're gonna weave. And pull down on that and you won't see that knot. We do the same thing with this guy. But we're going to come in from the other side. So come in from this side and out and pull down. So you'll never see that knot. And then you get this. So it just looks like a ballerina shoe. And then we're going to put little ties. So I had initially wrote down, you can do this as long as you want. But I had initially, get my brown out of the way. I have such dry skin. I get the yarn is sticking to me. So, um, 27 inches is what, but, I mean, you don't need to be exact, but I did 27 inches. Get the right side here. Of. So that's 27 inches there. And I cut that. You're gonna need two of these, one for each leg. So I'm gonna zoom out just a titch. So lay your 27 inch thing down just so it's even. Make sure that this is on the side, no matter what side it is, just make sure it's on the side. Cause this will be the front of your leg. So you still have to tie this to the other leg so it needs to be on the side. Doesn't matter which side, it just needs to be on a side for when you do this. So now you're gonna take this, just make sure this is even when you pull up. Make sure it's even. And then you want to cross them. I know it rolls around, but cross them, swing them around the back, cross them again. So it looks like little ballerina ties. Just like that. And then you can flip this over. Tie it at the back and then we'll just weave that in too. So for this, because we're not really sewing it to anything, it's just kind of tied around. I wanted it to be nice and snug. So tie your double knot then go into your red and pull this down so go into your red pop out the same hole as your other one so now that's pulled right down so you can't even tell 
that it was tied back there. Not everything is gone. And then I want you to tie another double knot and then poke this in to the foot. So cut it off, whatever nubbies, leave some nubbies, and then poke that down into the foot. So this shouldn't ever come off. And then your thing's on the side, like that. So that's what I want you to do to make it a little ballerina leg. So I'm going to put the pattern on the screen. I will include the twisted single crochet. That's what this is called that we did. And then I'll also include the 27 inch cord for wrapping. So let's get the arms done for chapter, to finish off chapter one. I figured doing chapters is a lot easier since my videos are generally so long. <laughs> so starting with your rabbit color, we're not doing anything other than the rabbit color for the arms. Um, most tutus don't have sleeves, they have spaghetti straps, so I didn't put any sleeves on the arms at all. So it's just gonna be all brown, white, or whatever color you're doing your bunny in. So I'll come back down here. So you're going to do a magic ring of six single crochets in your bunny color. Round one is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. So same deal. Marker goes in after the first stitch, not the second one. So for round two to round 35, you're going to do 34 rows of 12 single crochets. So again, you're going to need your row counter. So you have 12 stitches. You're going to do 34 rows and I will see you on the other side. So this is 34 rows. This is what your arm should look like. It's super duper long because it's a, you know, a long limbed bunny rabbit. It is the exact same size as your <laughs> butt or your leg. So it just seems longer. I think probably because there's no color or whatever on it. So, and it's not as round. The leg is obviously rounder than the arm, which is what you want. So uh, this is 15 stitches, this is 12 stitches. Um, for the arm, uh, we are going to be crocheting the arms on. We're not sewing the arms on. Um, I, orig I originally made the bunny uh, by sewing the arms and legs on, like old school, right? Um, making it easier for possibly beginners and stuff. However, I couldn't stand it, so I ripped it all out, and now I'm building, you know, the way I actually build. And... You know, if you're a beginner and you're watching this video, it's not that difficult. You got to try something outside of your norm every once in a while just to be able to see if you can do it. So we're going to cut just a little tail. That's all we need is just a sewing tail to sew it to each other. Uh, well, <laughs> sew it to each other. Sew it to the bunny. So we just need a little bit of a sewing tail. And again, I just kind of want you to go in here and pull this through it just when we sew it to the doll it's just a nicer look so
So I'm using my four millimeter. We're gonna start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Bring it down here. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. This will give you 12 stitches. So I'm just going to count, but your marker, if you're using one, if I can get into this stitch, if you're using a marker, it goes in after the first stitch, not the second one. So I'm just going to count to 12, putting two single crochets in each. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase, and this will bring you up to 18 stitches. I'll use my marker for this. I can just count to 18. <laughs> I'm not setting a very good example. So that's number one with your marker, and then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 24 stitches. That's number one, that's number two, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your next round and your final increase round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's three single crochets and then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. This will give you 30 stitches. For the next eight rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches, and I will see you on the other side. So this is my eight rows, this is what it gets. We're not stuffing it, so don't put anything in it. We're not stuffing it, but we are gonna do a little pink thing here. So, <clears throat> your next row is going to be a decrease row, and we're only going to decrease a little bit, and then we're going to do a few more straight rows, and then decrease some more, and then, so this one's going to be a three single crochet decrease, so that's number one, that's number two, and number three. I'm going to do an invisible visible decrease, which is done in the front loops. You can do whatever decrease you want. I would suggest. Um, a, an invisible decrease, but again, we're putting um, pink on part of the one side, so it's not really going to hugely matter, but you just go into your front loop, go into your front loop, and then you yarn over, pull through those two, and then finish the stitch. So that's an invisible decrease. But it's your project, you can do whatever your little heart desires. So bring it down to 24 stitches. So 
So now for the next two rows, I want you to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches, and I will see you on the other side. So that's my two rows. We're going to decrease, and then we're going to do a lot of rows. <laughs> So I want you to do two single crochet decrease, and this will bring you down 18 stitches. And for the most part, that's what we're going to stick with. So that's number one, that's number two, and then your decrease. Mine's invisible again. So that gives you 18 stitches again. We're not stuffing this. So for the next 17 rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. Now, if you look at the picture again, I mean, I'll put it up when I'm done talking here. But if you look at the picture again, if you need your ears longer or you want your ears to be longer, um, then you can do more than 17 rows. But uh, ultimately, um, there is a final step before we crochet it to the to the bunny but if you do want longer ears you're going to have to do more than 17 rows so I'll put my picture up now so you can make that judgment call and then my pause screen will go up for the 17 rows and I will see you on the other side So this is my 17 rows. So that's how long it is. And uh, so if you want it longer at this point before we do the next row, then just keep building one single crochet until you have the desired length. Um, mine on my bunny hang down, you know, part way down the arm. So they're pretty long. I don't have a face on her yet, but they're pretty long. Um, so oh, I can't get it all in. That's the arm. I put extra long arms, like long long limbs on the bunny but they hang down way past like halfway down the back so um, at this size here so but if you do want them longer you want them hang down to her butt or whatever then you can do it even longer so we are going to kind of gather the top so that when we sew it to the head, or we're not sewing it, when we crochet it to the head, it's not this, it's not this big hole we're putting on there. So, so we're going to have to, <coughs> sorry, I had to sneeze. So we have to gather this at the top. And so by doing that, did single crochet eight together. You know how we always do two together, which is a decrease? Well, this one we're going to do eight together. So you're going to go in, you're going to pull up a loop in eight different stitches and pull them up. That's four. That is eight. So once you've got all your loops on you're going to yarn over and go through all of them and then you're going to secure it with a chain one so that's how we kind of gather everything before it gets sewn on the head and then just do single crochets all back around to that chain one space So that's 10 stitches for me. Now this chain one space is where you want to fasten off. So go back into that chain one space and fasten off because you want your, you want your, when you sew it, this is going to be toward the head of 
or not sew it, crochet it. This will be toward the head. You'll never see it. You'll never see that. Um, so you want to definitely go into that chain one space to fasten off with. So you're going to um, only need a sewing tail um, long enough to actually just sew it to the head. It's not, but not sew it to the head like, like we do with legs and arms before we crochet them on. So it just needs to be a little one. Probably only going to use about three stitches. That's all I used for my other one. And then we can make the, if you're doing pink or white or whatever in between your ears, um, we'll do that next. It works out actually pretty quick. I chose the moss stitch to do this one, but you can use any stitch you want. You just do regular. I just didn't want the lines. So I used a moss stitch. So you can still see lines. It's just not as noticeable with the moss stitch and it's pretty simple. So we'll do that next. So <clears throat> the pink for the ears, I used a moss stitch like I already stated. Um, and the moss stitch that I used was a single crochet and a half double crochet. And all you do is alternate back and forth. But I'll walk you through the whole thing. So you want to chain seven. So the moss stitch is a single crochet and then a half double crochet. And you just keep re alternating single crochet half double crochet. So it gets a little tricky when um, you're doing the ends with decreases and stuff, but like I said, I'll walk you through it. I just use single crochets. So I ended with a half double. You're going to chain one and turn no matter what stitch you're on. So for our increase, we're going to put two single crochets in this stitch. And then you're going to continue with the moss stitch. So we're going to do a half double, a single, a half double, a single, and then we're going to come to the end and put two half doubles in this last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. For the next five rows, you're just going to do a moss stitch. So you're just going to, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're just going to alternate. Single, half double, single, half double. And the stitch is so great that even if you make a mistake, you're not going to see it. It's a fabulous stitch. I love it. Sometimes you kind of forget. I mean, you can look at the stitch and see where you're at because you can see there's three bars or you're going to see two bars so anyway for the next five rows just continue to do the moss stitch and I'll see you on the other side should have eight stitches by the way So that's my five rows. On camera you can see these lines, but in person you really don't see them as prevalent as they are on the camera for some reason. So we're going to start decreasing. So I just used single crochets to do my decreases. I didn't worry about whether I was in, in a moss stitch situation or not. So let's decrease the first two stitches. So you're going to use a, just a single crochet. And that will lead you right into a half double. You're going to moss stitch across until you have these two stitches left. So the next four stitches, you're going to do the moss stitch. You have these two left that you're going to just use a single crochet to decrease with. So you're going to do the same thing with the next row. You're going to decrease with a single crochet, just using singles. 
these next two stitches get a moss stitch. So of course you're going to start with half double because you just did singles. And then you're going to do another decrease using single crochet. Chain one, turn your work. For the next five rows, you're going to just do the moss stitch <laughs> in these four stitches. So easy peasy. I'm going to just start this one with the half double. Doesn't matter what you start with though. This is my fifth row. So you're going to decrease these four stitches. So the first two decrease. So you're just using singles and then you're going to decrease again. So decrease two times. Chain one and turn. You got these two stitches and now you're going to decrease those. It just rounds the top off and then you can fasten off. So fasten off with the sewing tail so you can sew this to the to your ear. You're going to have to hide this guy. Tuck him away. So with the moss stitch it doesn't matter which side you use. You can use either side. Um, there's still a right and wrong side I suppose but it's hard to tell the difference. And obviously it goes in here. Now I didn't make this to go all the way up because you're not going to see all the way up. Um, when we do it on the rabbit, oh, it's going to be hard to kind of show you but for the most part when the rabbit is sitting up his ears are down right he looks like this because he's laying down but um, I don't have him even either so when he's laying down or when he's sitting up sorry or laying down I suppose his ears just flop down like this so you really don't see that part so that's the reason I only went that far so Anyway, put your little thing in here. I like to stretch it out just because um, it relaxes the stitches and it just looks so much better. Sorry, I don't usually do that on camera, but um, you know, a lot of people don't stretch out their stitches. It just relaxes them. It just makes the piece of work look better. So I just went in and grabbed the top part. Try not to go all the way through, obviously. Uh, awesome. Please don't take sewing lessons from me. I suck. So, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just say that because I can't sew very well, but um, <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect because it is the inside of an ear. So, um, and you don't even need to do this part. So that's the inside of my ear. So I just tied a little knot right here. I just used those two bars to make a knot. Once I make it tight and then I come back in here to weave. I am grabbing some of the brown ear as well for my weaving. It pulls that knot in and nobody will ever know that that knot was there. So again, I'm just grabbing some of the brown to do my weaving in. And there we have it.
right. So, chapter two, we're going to, my legs, we are going to sew everything, or crochet everything together. The first thing we have to do is sew these two legs together. So, whichever, I'm just, I'm probably just going to use this guy. So this guy here can just get pulled through. And I'll just tuck that down. So, get my needle. So when I put my little red laces on, I made sure that my thing was sitting to the side. So that this was at the front. And I implored you to do the same, so hopefully you did that. So make sure that this one's at the front. <laughs> and then, I just used three stitches. Pretty sure I did. So, we just need to kind of make sure you're even going through. And just however you sew, sew these two legs together. So I'm still using my four millimeter hook. So with your dress color, you're going to make a slip knot. Make sure you're at the back. This is my front with the two X's. I'm going to turn it around and make sure I'm at the back. Going in anywhere, um, I'm going to go into this stitch. This will be your new marker spot. So wherever you want to go into for your marker spot, maybe I'll go over here. That's where you go. Doesn't matter where, just wherever. So you're going to attach with a single crochet and that's going to be your number one stitch. You're going to do one single crochet and an increase. Let me zoom back in for this round. So that's my one single crochet. So your next stitch gets an increase of two single crochets in the same space. Now we crochet our legs together. I've got one stitch before the other leg. It's kind of a deep stitch because that's where I fastened off on my other leg. So that's my one single crochet. I'm going to pop across. That's my sewing spot. I'm going to pop across to this one. And this will be my increase stitch. So it, it's going to get kind of squishy. Just continue around one single crochet increase. So this is my 25th stitch and that's right before I started sewing another another awkward spot and then I pop across to the next available stitch for my increase So I have 42 stitches, which is what I had the last time on my other bunny. That's It was the same number. So, don't worry about this guy. We'll take care of him after. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. We're not increasing a whole lot because it's a ballerina and she's most likely not going to be a chunky monkey. So this is our last increase 
Um, and it's a two single crochet increase. So go into your reattached stitch because we counted that. I have 56 stitches. So for the next 10 rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of those 56 stitches, and I will see you on the other side. So this is my 10 rows. I'm gonna take care of this little guy here. I got stuffing in my legs, so I'm just going to pop him down into my leg. Uh, I'm not going to go back and forth or anything. So I don't think that's gonna really going to go anywhere. So that's my 10 rows. Um, the next round we're going to be doing is going to be in the back loops only because that's where all of this tule went so this is why I have this little decorative thing on the dress is because I attached all this tule into the back loops that or the front loops of this next row so if you're doing this the same as me then um, you're gonna want to do the back loops only in this next row like I'm going to do so if you do decide that you're doing the tule, just like my bunny has, this is what I bought at Michael's. It's the thin stuff, so you can work with it a lot better. It's called Holographic Dot Tule, T-U-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Nobody knows how to say that word. Um, but this is bought at Michael's. One row, one roll is all I use. So that's for the skirt and for the little bow thing on her head was all one row and I still probably have about this much left of the the roll itself. So that is what I used for all of this. And it, co it comes in so many different colors and then this little bow thing on her head. So, so many different colors very very pretty and easy to work with so that's what I got and that's what you're gonna need we are probably probably gonna be doing this off camera it is very time-consuming takes a lot but I will tell you exactly what you need for what we're doing but in the meantime let's get back to doing our dress so back loops only so we need all these front loops let me bring it down I need all these front loops for the tule to go into. We need, not I need. So all these back ones are what you're going to go into, these guys right there. One, one in each back loop. So we're not decreasing until... Well, we're gonna we're gonna change to our bunny color. So whatever color you're doing your bunny after this row. So get set up. If you're like me and you change the in the stitch prior to, um, that's what we're gonna do. So after we do one single crochet in each of these back loops, we're going to change to our bunny color. So I'll be changing back to the taupe, and I will see you on the other side. So that's my one single crochet in my back loop so only it leaves this ridge. That's our front loops we'll be getting into later. So I am not haven't finished my last stitch yet because I'm going back to my taupe. So I'm going to finish that stitch with my new color. So 
Um, this next round is going to be seven single crochets and a decrease. And you're going to have two extra stitches at the end. This whole row will bring you to 50 stitches. <clears throat> when your decrease is done, you're going to have two extra stitches. Just put one single crochet in each of those, bringing you up to 50 stitches. And then I want you to put one single crochet in each stitch around. Um, and then we'll meet back here and I'll show you how to do the tule. So you're going to do seven single crochets and a decrease. Oh, I'm stuck already. That's my seven single crochets. And then I'm going to do an invisible decrease. So front loop and front loop, yarn over, pull through, finish the stitch. So continue with that, do your one single crochet after, follow all the prompts on my pause screen, and I will see you on the other side. This is my 50th stitch, I'm not going to finish it with my brown. We're going back to the dress color. So I'm going to finish it with my red. And then <clears throat> I'm going to put one stitch in and then we're going to get to the tule. I just want to make sure everything is nice and secured. So that's my stitch marker spot for my next row. Put a stitch marker on your loop so that it can't get pulled out and we'll start um, with the tule and I'll tell you the size that you need to cut and everything involved with that. So this is the row that I used before. So that's all I have left. It's so hard to see, isn't it? <sighs> you see well, maybe you'll see it better. So that, run my hand along it, is what I had left from the roll. So you can probably still find something to do with it, but one roll is all you need. And I don't know how much it was. Um, I don't remember now, like, I don't know, 590, no, I don't know how much it was. I'm in Canada anyway, so my prices will be different. So let's open this up. I just scored the tape because I wanted to keep the, the label, but you can open it any way you want. Oh, my scissors suck, apparently. Oh, I think I went too deep there. Well, I wanted to save the label, but apparently I'm not doing that. Okie dokie. You're going to need a measuring tape. Which is why I have a measuring tape. And a decent pair of scissors. Um... Longer ones would be a little more beneficial to you, but I don't have my longer ones. Oh, my longer ones. All right, so these are heavy duty, but I just want the length because, I mean, you can use scissors like this, which I did my last one, but you're like, cut, 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 cut. It's a lot of cutting. So I measured each piece at eight and a half inches long. Get rid of that. So you don't need to be specific. I would just cut the one piece so you have an idea of the length. But if you don't find it long enough, then you can do you can do whatever you want. So um, I didn't measure it every single time. You need 27 of these. So, go ahead and cut your 27, and then we take them all and we cut them all in half.
that's my 27 um this row obviously or this roll i keep saying row this roll obviously didn't have what my last one had because i'm already out that was my 27th one though um so if i wanted to do a bow on the head i probably just use the rest of this white stuff i imagine since that is the end of it so just make sure it's stacked properly and then you're going to cut all of this in half now this doesn't have to be uniform it doesn't have to be perfect um because it's tule so cut them all in half see why i needed my bigger scissors so now we begin take your dress i'm going to bring you back down so you're going to take your little piece this might be hard to see because it's not going to be stacked anymore but it is red which is why i chose to do this so just kind of grab it and fold it make sure you fold it in half just like you would do hair and that's how we're going to do it if you've ever done hair so you're going to go in, you're going to pick up your front loop from when we did our back posts. You're going to wrap the tule around your hook and you're going to pull through. Now some of these sequences that are in this can get kind of stuck. You might have to pull, but you're using acrylic yarn. You won't have to worry about it breaking. If you're using another type of yarn, then you, there might be some concern. And then just kind of use your finger and pull that so it's tight. So just like you're putting hair on, now you're probably going to lose some sparkly things. but And that is all I did. And I didn't skip a stitch. I did all 50 stitches. So you got 50 stitches, 27 and 27 is 54, so you should have, actually maybe that's why I said 27, I'll have a couple of pieces left over to do the bow, so I should be able to do the bow, because I only have 50 stitches. Sometimes it's tight to uh, not down, but... If you wanted to do every other one, you can do that too. It's completely up to you. It's your project. So I got a couple of stitches left. I had to miss some because we did our back loops when um, we had 56 stitches and we did 54 of these all together. Um, so I had to skip a couple. I just did it at the back here. I just did it just right over here. So my math, <laughs> so I, I probably had the right count until I changed my pattern. Sometimes that happens when you design your own stuff. So I'll just use the white for the little bow on the top, or I'll just buy some more red. I have red. It just doesn't have the sequence in it, so. I'll just buy more of the stuff with the sequence in it. So this is my last stitch. So, it, um, 
going to be awkward for the next few rows because this stuff will um, get stuck on everything. So, oh, I split a nail. So, to make your life easier, find something elastic or something to tie this down so that you can work in peace because this will become super annoying. So I'll just use a piece of yarn. We won't be putting stuffing in this for a couple of rows anyway and then you won't be able to well, you'll probably you still tie it around the legs if it's as long as mine is. So, um, let's do the decorative thing around. So, we're going to ignore the, this up here. We're going to use the front posts of the next row to do our next stitch. So, that's what we're going to use. So, it's right above. This is all where my ties are. There's a, there's a stitch that I skipped because I didn't have enough. There's the other one. So I skipped two right there and right there. And, and you won't notice it in the skirt part. And then when I do my border, you won't notice those two skipped stitches. But that's because I had 54 pieces and I had 56 stitches. So this, the all these front posts are what we're going to be working into on our next round. Our next round is is like a um, it is and it isn't. It's like a uh, oh gosh, what do you call it? It's like a crocodile stitch. So I need red, but I got red attached here. So if you have another ball, that's great. Or if you do what I do. And you spin little cakes. You could just take from this part of the roll. So that's all I'm going to do for this next round. That's the greatest part about spinning cakes is you can use both ends, the middle and the outside. So we are going to make a slip knot and we're going to reattach. So where's my back? I'm going to reattach at the back. You should always reattach at the back. So, going into the post. So, the post literally right above all your ties. Like, that's how close you're going to go. You're going to go into that. You're going to attach using a single crochet. So, the crocodile stitch that I chose to do is going to be three double crochets on this post. It's sort of a crocodile stitch. A crocodile stitch is doing exactly what I'm going to do, but it's usually done using a V stitch. I'm just using posts, so that's the difference. So if you already know how to do a crocodile stitch, that's what I did all the way around. Uh, I skipped two stitches in between. This is, this is the next post I'm going to use. So for this post that I'm on, I'm going to do three double crochets. So I'm using the red post, not the brown post. And then I'm going to turn my work this way. So there's my three double crochets. The next post is right here, this red one. That's the next post. So I'm going to, and it's awkward, I'm just going to hold this down with my thumb. I'm going to pull up on my loop and I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to come in from this direction into my post like that. Yarn over, pull it up, and do your double crochets, three of them. So you can kind of tighten it down now. Once you get that first one in there, the other two just go in no problem. And that's what I did all the way around to hide all these ties. So turn it back the normal way. 
you're going to skip two posts. So you're going to skip that post, you're going to skip that post, and you're going to go into this post. Sorry, yarn over and go into the post. And do three double crochets. No chaining or anything. Now turn it around so you can get to the other post from this side. Take your finger, hold that down, it's just easier. Yarn over, come from this side, and pick up that post. Oops. Pick up that post. Let's make sure I have the post. Pick up that post and do your three double crochets. So it's awkward, but it works. All in the way you hold your mouth. Let's do some more so you can see what the outcome is, so you know whether you want to do it or not. We don't chain in between this. We're not chaining or anything. So skip two posts. Yarn over, go into your third post. I'm trying to stay on camera. Three double crochets. So you're going in this way with these posts. And then when you turn it, you got to go in the other way. Turn to the side. Hold that down with your finger. Just take your thumb and pop up that post from underneath. It's easier. Go in, grab your post. And do three double crochets. I make it look easy because I've done this stitch a lot. Uh, just using posts and not V-stitches. I did with my whole mermaid pencil case. So, oh, I just dropped my ball. I forgot I can't just pull on my ball. So that's what you're going to do. And that's going to be what it's going to look like around the top so it hides all these ties underneath here. So, and you're going to have to pull this back to find the post that you skip, 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 and then go into this one. So once the stitch is in there, they actually look like they're fairly close. It doesn't look like you've skipped anything, but it's a big stitch, but it hides stuff. So. <laughs> Continue to do this all the way around. And I will see you on the other side where we're probably going to be the end of chapter two. So I am on my last um, half, my backwards half of my crocodile stitch. I'm all twisted and everything's stuck to my tule. So um, there's two posts left, but I'm not going into them because I was doing the skip two. You can just kind of fold down your your stitch. I would go right into the stitch and I don't know, maybe not into that, but around the post to do your fasten off on top of that stitch. So it looks even. I'm going to take my straggler and my what I just fastened off with and tie it in a knot. And then I'm just going to weave up underneath this and down into <coughs> the butt part. But I'm just going to come up in here because I haven't put any stuffing in yet. So just be careful how tight you pull that. I just pulled that way too tight. So, um, that's it for chapter two. You can stuff this guy 
and then when we come back I will finish um, we will start building his body so I'll just make sure you keep this on your loop just so nothing happens to it and um, that's the back of my doll let me show you the front of my doll <laughs> So that's the front. So we're done the hard part. This is this was the hardest, longest part of the entire um, the entire bunny rabbit. So um, when we come back, we've already done our little thing. We're gonna start our little belly top, our crop top for the ballerina outfit, and um, work up into doing his head and crocheting the ears on. That'll be chapter three. And then I think I might just leave chapter, I put a chapter four in there for the um, face, which I finally completed in chapter one. I hadn't yet done my face, but that's the face. I finally got it done. It was big decisions on what I was gonna do with the face. So um, I used pink for the brows instead of black because black against the white was just horrendous. Um, sticks out a lot like that. And that's fine for his mouth, but this was eyebrows. so and the little lashes, lashy eyebrows, so I didn't want to do black. So I chose pink for my white one, but I will probably be using black for my, um, for this guy, because he's brown, so. Anyway, that's what we're gonna be doing in the upcoming chapter, so I'll see you there. Hi guys, so um, this is now going to be chapter three. We ended with doing our trim after we added all our tule. We did our crocodile stitch all the way around hide all these little knotties. We'd already done these two rows and I, hopefully we, have changed our color. So that's where we're gonna start is with the color change. So you take your little stitch marker off your uh, loop. We are using red um, for, the, for a while. So I would, um, cut off this brown. I tied mine so I don't really need to weave mine in. So I'm just going to cut it off with a tail. We're going to add it later uh, but for now we're going to do multiple rows of our dress color. So I'm still going to weave in this little tail here but I don't have to go far because I tied it. So come back down here with me and um, this round with your dress color again is going to be a decrease round followed by a one single crochet in each stitch round. Six single crochet decrease and then I just want you to put one single crochet in each. So this is number one where our marker is. That's my six, signal, six single crochets. And then my decrease is still going to be in the front loops only to make it invisible. So I'm back around, that's my 42 stitches, and just like the row before, our decrease before, we have to add the two stitches at the end, so just put one single crochet in each stitch. So that'll bring it up to 44 stitches. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. The same thing is going to happen. It's going to happen with every row, and I'm not going to stop and, and explain it. I've explained it twice. You're going to have the two stitches. So. Um, sometimes when you sew legs together you just get oddball odd, oddball numbers that nothing divides into so and that's why that just happens and it's no big deal it's not going to change the look of your rabbit or anything or anything else that you're making so the next round is going to be five single crochets and a decrease plus the two extra stitches will give you 38 stitches and then I just want you to do nine rows of those 38 stitches. One single crochet in each stitch. So
So this is my nine rows. Um, I put some stuffing in mine. I had to tie down further for my skirt, but I put some stuffing in mine. So this is what it should look like. It comes in nice with the hourglass shape. So we're going to do another decrease and then we're going to sew our arms on. So your next decrease is going to be four single crochet and a decrease. So I am done my row and now it's time to put the arms on. If you feel like this is in the wrong spot, let me just move it a couple of stitches over your a new marker place. It's not going to be that huge of a deal. I don't think mine is. I'm going to sew my first arm to um, that spot and then match the other one. That way I don't have to move my marker. Hopefully it's in a decent spot. So all you get to do is take your arm, thread the needle, figure where it's going to go. And I know it's difficult to kind of see what I'm doing, but kind of find the middle where you think the middle might be. I think mine might be here. Um, yeah, that's not too horrible. And then you just whip stitch. So again, I'm going to use three stitches. It always seems to be nice and safe to just to use three stitches. Oops. Sorry, hard to see what I'm doing and film at the same time as I'm trying to show you. I got it, can't see. One more in the middle to make my knot. So give that a wiggle that tightens your knot right down. So there's my one arm. The arms do seem exceptionally long because I figured, you know, and they're, they're pliable, but they're as long as the legs. You just can't, now that the dress is on there, it makes the legs look shorter, but they are actually the same size. So get your other arm on. This is the tricky part. I'm trying to get them all matchy matchy. But if your arms aren't exactly matched, it'll just look like the body's turned a wee bit. It's not going to be a huge, great big deal unless you're that OCD about it. So I think mine might be all right. It's hard to tell at this stage. I didn't put stuffing in mine. It might be easier for you if you put stuffing in yours. And now all I want you to do is do one single crochet all the way around. And we're still using the red. That is how I got this look off the shoulder dress is by doing it this way. So I'll bring you back down a little bit. So one single crochet in each stitch around and then we'll start decreasing again and change back to our bunny colors. So I will see you on the other side. You should have, I wrote down um, 52 stitches but I don't know how many stitches you used. Your numbers may or may not be the same. So we'll find out when I come back. I'll just show you how to do the arms. One, two, three, four, five. I gotta remember to count at the same time. So you got to make sure you go into the last stitch available and then you pop over to the first stitch available here. You can use the same spot that you sewed into. That'll cut down on any holes that might happen. Oh, I got my stuffing all jacked up in there. And then you just follow the arm around. So that's what you're going to do to the other side as well. And when you come back around, you're going to be using the last stitch available in the arm and then the first stitch available, which could be the sew space. So just continue doing that and I'll meet you right back here. So 
So I'm back around and mine is 52 stitches. So I'm still on board with what I was doing. Um, I shared my stitch space with my sew spaces. So um, you may have done yours differently and that's okay. You're, it's not wrong. It's just different. So just know your numbers are not going to be the same as mine. So you can stuff this if you want, but it, it is going to get quite awkward if you do. So you can always stuff later. Your next round is going to be a decrease round. So I want you to do three single crochets and a decrease. And this is probably going to be 10 stitches we get rid of. So should be at 42 when we're done this. We'll see. So that's number one. That's number two and number three. And then your decrease. So it's quite aggressive. Like I said, you should probably get 10 rounds anyway. And then after you're done, I just want you to do one single crochet in each of those stitches. So this is my 42nd stitch. I did not complete it because I want to go back to my rabbit color. So I'm going to finish that last stitch with my rabbit color. So I'm just going to tie my straggler to my red. And now I can't see me. I pulled my camera, pushed my camera back because of the legs. So I just tied my red and my um, my red and my straggler. So I don't have to weave in at all. I will cut my red off though with a tail just to be on the safe side just so that knot doesn't work itself out because everything gets tucked down in there with stuffing anyway. So. So um, we're going to continue with our decreases and you, still your decreases you're going to end up with that second, the two stitches and we're going to end up with that all the way through. So I just want to reiterate and um, your next rounds uh, because we're going to do the one single crochet in each stitch but your next decrease round you're going to do two single crochets and a decrease plus the two extra stitches. That gives you 32 stitches and I just want you to do one single crochet in each of those 32 stitches. So the next three rows are going to be um, decrease and then two rows of just single crochets in each of whatever number you get. I gotta put all my numbers on the screen, don't worry about it. Um, and then we're going to start increasing for the head. So everything is sewn, everything is crocheted on, nothing is sewn on. So your next round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. When you stuff this, you got to make sure you're getting right into this shoulder area. It's the same thing with the legs. You had to make sure. Uh, I didn't mention it, but I'm sure you all know how to stuff stuff. Stuff stuff. That's going to work out well in my translation.
So I did not get my arms straight. So it looks like my body is slightly turned a bit, but that's okay. A lot of my dolls, I used to purposely turn their head. This will look like the head's turned slightly. I'm, I'm okay with that. Nothing I can do about it now anyway. So we're going to start making the head, which means we're going to start increasing. So your very first increase is going to make, I mean all these increases are going to make it squishy. This one's going to be a one single crochet increase. Oops. I hate when my yarn does that. That's my, I keep putting my marker over there for some reason. That's my one single crochet. And then my increase of two single crochets in the same space. So I have 33 stitches. <coughs> so your normal consensus would be we should have 32 stitches. We always carry that those two stitches the whole entire length of our decreases. We carry the two stitches. Once we um, went into our increases those two stitches became the one single crochet increase. It all fit, so you have an extra stitch. Do you understand? So your number should be 33 stitches and not 32. Trying to get back on track with the numbers and it kind of did it for us. So you shouldn't have the two extra stitches anymore. Your next increase is gonna be two single crochets and an increase. So you should have 44 stitches. Everything's going to increase by 10. Everything. So your next round is going to increase by 10. So we're able to do our increases 10 times around. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this is going to be our last increase round. So it's pretty wavy. It won't stay like this, don't worry. For the next 10 rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 55 stitches. And then we'll start decreasing again. And in the process of that, we'll, we'll crochet our ears on. So 10 rows. One single crochet in each stitch around, and I will see you on the other side. So this is my 10 rows. That's what it should look like. So we're gonna start decreasing now. So nothing on the face has to go on like we're not doing safety eyes or anything we're going to do um a few rounds of decreases four to be exact and then we're going to crochet on the ears that's the plan and then once we're done the head that'll be the end of chapter three so our first round of decrease are going to be eight single crochet decrease So just to let you know, this is my eight single crochet decrease 
as far as I can go. I cannot get another decrease in here. So these last five stitches, you're just going to put a single crochet in each of them, and this will bring you up to 50 stitches for this row. And that's the way that the decreases are going to work all the way down. You're going to have five extra stitches. So your next round is going to be seven single crochets and a decrease. So, um, you get the gist of what we're doing with your five stitches here at the end and everything. So, uh, to make the video shorter, I'm going to put your next two decreases up and then I'll meet you back here after. So, your next one's going to be six single crochet decrease plus your five single crochets with my counts. And then the one following one after that is five single crochets. So, we're just counting down in order. So, do your next two decreases and I will meet you back and we'll get the ears done. So I am done my five single crochets decrease. You should have 35 stitches. Um, these ears <laughs> find my sewing needle there it is okay these ears the part that we gathered right there is the part that goes toward the head that's why it's on the same side as the pink so how we sewed our arms on is the same way we're gonna sew our ears on and again if you have to change the um, I'm going to put some stuffing in mine before I do this because it might be a little little difficult to see where it's going if it's not stuffed. So, you can do whatever you want, but that would be my suggestion. might make your life a little easier. And make sure you're getting down into that neck area because... Um, you don't want a wobbly neck. You don't want a huge neck either. So, so once you kind of got an idea of, I mean, it's not completely full, but it gives me an idea of where I want my ears to be. So you can have your ears anywhere you want. Um, I put mine more toward the back. <clears throat> The decreases are going to pull it up a little bit, so just be aware of that. But I wanted mine to kind of hang down behind um, the back a little bit. I don't know if I want to go that far back, but anyway, this is going to be hard to do on camera. I'm going to do my best, but I don't think you really need me to show you what I'm doing on camera. Let's see if I can make my dolls sit down for this. So, again, it's the same concept that we did last time you're going to just use three stitches and yeah I crisscross them like that because I feel it gives a better hold so um, once you've got your stitches in there I'm just gonna pull that down there stick my stuff in there so it's not a great big hole you have to crochet around it's a little tiny thing it is awkward though um i made this one a little bit longer so so we can finish stuffing it after We're going to keep decreasing though, so your next round isn't going to be one single crochet. It's going to be um, jumping right into the other decrease. So again, that makes it a little awkward around the ears, but hopefully you can just kind of go... Uh, I guess you're not. The next decrease is going to be a four single crochet decrease. So this is going to all change your numbers again. 
um, because we've just sewn on more stuff. So, but that's what happens when you sew on stuff. Your numbers are weird. Your numbers change. It's just what happens. So, that's number one. That's four single crochets. And then I got stuck on my dress. And then your decrease. So, continue to do this all the way around. I'll show you how to do the ear in a second here. And uh, I'll put my counts. Two, three, four. I can't count and talk at the same time. Put my counts up on my pause screen when we get to the pause screen. And I'm probably going to put your next decrease up there. Um, just because I want to make the video shorter and you already know what you're doing. So this is number one. And I'll pop over to my shared stitch space and make that number two, three, and four. And then my decrease is on the side of my ear. So that's not too, too bad. Hopefully my next one. Now this is where the problem is. Your, everything gets stuck to your dress. Mine's still kind of partially tied down. So it's quite awkward. If you have a table, I would suggest getting a table, even though he's starting to slip on me here. So it's very, very awkward. So this is my fourth stitch. So I got to do my decrease right where I split my head and my ear. So sorry, that was my phone. So I'm going to do my front loop decrease here, and then I'm going to pop over here. And the first available stitch, I'm going to do my decrease. So um probably going to be a tight spot and then if that was awkward hopefully yours isn't too too bad and then i'll just continue so i'll meet you on the other side So this last decrease, I had only four extra stitches and I'm at 36 for my count. So your next round before we continue our decreases is just going to be one single crochet in each of those 36 stitches. Try not to overstuff the head. Um, it can be difficult because there's lots of room, but we are sewing a face on that. Just make sure it's round. Sometimes you can get a flat back. So your next two rounds are going to be both decreases. Uh, you're going to do a two single crochet decrease and then a one single crochet decrease. And then this will literally be the end of chapter three. So that's number one. That's number two. Oh, I'm stuck. And then your decrease. So you see how the front of my face, you can't really see where I've been decreasing. I mean, you kind of, if you look at it in the wrong angle, the wrong light, but for the most part, those invisible decreases are pretty good. Anyway, continue to do this all the way around, not getting your stuffing in there. I'm going to put both things on my pause screen. And I will see you on the other side. So, you should have 18 stitches. I gotta take my tie off because it's not actually tying my dress down anymore. 
but we're just about done, so I don't think I really need it. So, my head needs to finish getting stuffed, and then we're going to cinch this closed. So, I don't need this attached anymore. You can fasten off. We're doing a large hole cinch because it just looks better in my opinion. If you don't agree with me, you can do another round of one single crochet decrease if you want. It's up to you. I like the look of a larger hole. So you just need a cinch tail and a weaving tail. So we're not stuffing the ears at all so try not to shove any stuffing up there it'll give you a funny look if you try to do that but again it's whatever you want to do it's your project that's just a suggestion my hook. everything is stuck to this dress I like the tule but things get stuck to it very easily so my ears are, my head's going to look like it's turned, but that's okay. So I initially did that by sewing my arms on wrong, and then my ears I didn't sew on quite right either. So, so make sure this is kind of really stuffed, because we're going to pull down on this. And I don't want any waves in your head to look funny. So... Hopefully mine's stuffed right. It's hit or miss, I suppose. It's hard to tell sometimes. So again, we're just going to cinch it. We're going to use the front loop. I'm going to skip a stitch because it's too hard to get into. Front loop in, front loop out. So we're going to do that all the way around. And you can, if you want, skip a stitch because it's a large hole cinch. So it's not going to make a big difference. It's completely up to you. So I'm all the way back around. So, pull it tight. That pulls your ears up. That's why I said don't put any stuffing in there. Because it just make it look funny. Give this a wiggle. And that'll close that right uh, my doll is slipping so now I'm going to go across this way and make another knot give it a wiggle and then you can weave so they say three different directions um, I just weave wherever but just make sure you're going in right next to where you came out so it looks like a stitch but but that's what your top's gonna look like I just oh good gosh I just feel that the large clothes at the top um, is a lot better so my head is totally turned. Um, as far as the bow that I did for the head, there's really no rhyme or reason. I'm just going to take what I've got left of this roll. I'll do the white, not the pink. It doesn't really matter to me. So I'm just going to take what I have. Again, I didn't write down a measurement. I didn't write anything down. I'm just going to cut this in half. And then cut it in half that way. So probably about the same size as what I did the dress with. I end up cutting it after I put it on the head. But, um... So I just did the same thing. I, uh... I go into my top, and I went pretty far into my top, like that's a chunk to pick up. And I pull through. 
it's hard to pull through because of the sequence. But if you're not using sequence, you're probably not struggling. And like I said, I um, I cut this right down after, like the the ones on the top. Not so much, not so much the one at the back. I made the long one at the back on purpose. So pull through wherever you want to. It's hard to do when my doll is slipping all over the place. And, and save a couple for the back that are going to be long. So that can get cut off short. That might have been too short. I might put some red in there. I just have some plain red, so I might put some red in there. Um, you've got two pieces left if you got as much as me. You can just do the long pieces at the back. But I'm going to do um, more, two more short pieces of this stuff, and then I'm going to use red for my long pieces at the back. So this is, anyway, I'll do that off camera. This is the end of chapter three. So the, chapter four is just going to be the face, the muzzle, and then the face. So I will see you in chapter four. Hi, welcome to chapter four. This is where we're just going to do the face. So we need to first start with our muzzle. So get your rabbit color. You're going to do a ma magic ring of six single crochets. We're still using our four millimeter. You are going to need a safety nose. I have a little pink one here. I was going to use brown, but he's got pink on his ears, so, and he's, I already got a brown muzzle, so, oh, again, what are you doing way up there? Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. So again, after the first stitch, that's where your stitch marker goes. That is my 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 18 stitches. We're doing normal numbers again. I think I, this far into the video I don't need to explain what an increase is. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 24 stitches and that's as much as we're increasing. We're not going any more than that. So that's as big as we're going and right now you're probably looking at it going, wait a minute. Why is that so small? Trust the process. For the next three rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of those 24 stitches. Now this is going to widen it out, but bunny rabbits don't really have that big of a nose. It's not like we're making a bear or, you know, something that where it needs to be wider. So do your three rows and I will see you on the other side.
So this is my muzzle, as small as it looks right now. This is going to make him look like he has cheeks, which you want on a cute little bunny rabbit. Anyway, um, you're going to need a sewing tail, but you probably knew that. So let's do our stuff. So on my guy here, this is what I did. See how his muzzle is so small? It's the same size. It looks like he's got these cheekies. You don't want to take up too much room, right? We had to put our safety nose on. And then we're going to do this. These whiskers we can do after we sew the eyes on. We don't have to do the whiskers now. So. I didn't put it right in the hole. I put it up here for my safety nose. arrow pointing down. If you can get it centered without making another hole, then put it there. It doesn't matter where you're you start to sew. But as long as it's centered with this hole and you've got a hole right below it to start making your mouth, then that should be a good spot. Put your back on. So, oh, I might have tightened that a little too much. There we go. You need to get a piece of black. So what you're going to do is you're going to go up through this hole. That's why you wanted a hole right below it because it, I think it would look stupid otherwise. You can choose the size of your mouth, just make sure it's even, obviously. Um, I had many different mouths on this, and none of them really suited me, except for a little small one. I had a great big smile, I had, but I mean, it all just seemed to look stupid. So I'll pop out over here, and then you're going to go back down the same hole you just came out, and you're going to pop out evenly, preferably over here and then go back down the same hole and out. Oops, let's pull on the right one here. So that's what I did for my mouth. Put a bigger smile on that for my other one, like I said, and it just looked horrible. I'm going to cut these off. You can tie this in a knot back here just to make sure that, you know, nobody's going to pull your mouth off. But, you know, it depends on who you're giving it to. I doubt anyone's going to come along, but you never know. Some kid could get picking away at something. So you are putting stuffing up here, but you're going to sew it partially around. So put it down. We need room for the eyes. Put it as low as you can for his chin, like down by the neck, because I made some pretty big eyes and that was done on purpose because that's what I envisioned when I thought about making a ballerina bunny. I thought about making the big eyes for it. So here's one of the eyes I've already got made. Um, <laughs> everything, everything in the way and the tule here getting so my eyes are going to sit like that right on top of the muzzle so you don't have much space up here and we're doing little eyelash brows type thing so put it as low as you can on his neck if that gives you any indication of where mine is I am not going to entirely sew this on camera, but um, it's just too, too difficult. But just remember that uh, when you're sewing this on, you need to keep it puffed up like this because, first of all, it helps with 
where you're sewing it on. I don't think mine's even in the middle, honestly. Nope, it's not. See, I already screwed up. I try to aim everything toward the camera, which is above me, and I don't ever get it. I screw up too much doing that. So, anyway. I'm going to sew off camera. But just remember, when you're partway around sewing, you have to put stuffing up there. So, don't sew yourself in and then go, oh crap, I didn't stuff it. So, I'm going to sew mine on. I'll meet you right back here. So, that's my muzzle. Um, I think I got it a little crooked. <laughs> so, slightly turned that way a little bit but it was hard to get it even because my whole head's turned because my whole body's turned because like look at when I pick it up you can see the the turn there's my arms and now my muzzles crooked <laughs> oh the kids won't even notice so um eyeballs next so like I said this is already my one eyeball here let me tie everything in the back and then I'll I'll show you what it's gonna look like you can make the decision what you want to um, use I used a 3.5 millimeter hook and um, some four weight yarn but you can do whatever you want actually the the one yarn is a little on the thick side this blue is a little thicker but my black is really no thicker so it's four weight but it's a thick four weight so the eyes basically sit right on top of the nose like that uh, probably not that close they're gonna be further apart I'm gonna put a little white thing in there but anyway let's go ahead and make the eye I just um, it works up so fast Whoa! everything slides off my table uh, it works up so fast and um, I did use glue when I sewed it on so if you do have some glue hanging around um, I just use this stuff it's clear Amazon basics. I bought like a whole box of six bottles for it's like six bucks. So, um, get your whatever color you're using, and at your 3.5. So, with your black, you're gonna make a magic ring and six single crochets. You could probably come back down here. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. This is going to be with the black. So that's my one single crochet. And then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. It's very hard for me to see black. I'm gonna have to just guess where my stitches are. So you're gonna do it three times anyway. If you struggle to see black like me, you're doing it three times for your marker. So, we're going to change to blue, so this last stitch is going to get finished with your blue color. I'm going to tie my black straggler to my, or my blue straggler to my black with a double knot. Just so it doesn't go anywhere. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn. 
So I'm not closing in this spot. I'm going back the other way. So you're going to have to pull this back. There's a stitch right there you have to get into. I'm barely on camera, sorry. So you're going to do three single crochets in the course of three stitches. That's three single crochets. In this next stitch, you're going to do two half doubles in the same space. So I'm just pulling up on mine a little bit, just because it is a small hook and thick yarn. Your next stitch, you're going to put two double crochets in the same space. In the next stitch you're going to put two half doubles in the same space. So we're just shaping the eye when we're doing this. And then you're going to do the last two single crochets. You're going to just do a chain one here, but that's going to be your fasten off. So you want a sewing tail here, not any of the crap that's hanging off the back. It's just easier that way. Cut your black off with a tail so that you can tie these two together as well. And then you can snip this off. I wouldn't go too short because you kind of want to tuck that back there with the glue if you're using glue. And then my little tail like you saw just on my other eye. I just kind of tucked it up in here. Like that. And cut it off. Leaving a nubby. Always leaving a nubby. So, um, my other eye. For some reason, I left it. So, this is what you're going to look like here. I'm going to put white in here. We're going to do white if you want to do a little sparkle in, in the eye. So this, oops. This was the idea, great big eyes. So you're just going to make sure you have the placement right. I don't know if I exactly have the placement right, but you get the idea. Great big eyes on the bunny. Um, I'm going to do uh, just a kind of a glimmer, just so it doesn't look so creepy because currently it looks like it's creepy and we don't want it to look creepy so you're just going to need a little piece of white for each eye like it doesn't have to be very long you're just going to tie it at the back so um, you're going to do the opposite so whatever you do on like wherever you put it on here, you're going to put it on the opposite side. So just come up through the back and then down wherever, just to stitch over. It doesn't have to be too big of a glimmer. And then tie these two together at the back. So I'm going to come in and show you that with my eyes, I pop out the same hole. I do this with just about everything that I do. 
I pop out the same hole, I tie the knot there. Double knot. I cut it off, leave a nubbies, and I poke it down. That way, if anybody's messing around with your eyeballs, they're going to take both of them. So, of course, my muzzle's crooked, but you get the, you get the gist of the eyes. So, to finish off my eyes, I'm going to use black. I used pink in my last one because it just looked, <laughs> just looked better. So, I'm not sure what this. This one's brown, so it might be a difference. I cut a really long piece for this. And this is the brow lash thing that I like to do. I just started actually liking to do it. Doesn't matter where you come in, just matters where you pop out. So pop out where, you know, it's not going to look like an angry, <laughs> an angry eyelash. And then just wherever you want your, your eyelash to be. Yeah. I'm going to move mine over a bit because I think that might look angry. So you don't want it to look angry. You just want it to look pretty. So it's hard to do on camera. So you want to pop over to wherever you want your eyelashes to be. And then you're going to go in there and you're going to pop out. So don't pull tight because that'll go, you want that just to sit above the eye. So go back into the same hole. Go back into the same hole and go out where you want your second eyelash to pop out. Go back into the same hole and go where you want your third eyelash to pop out. So your third eyelash won't pop out until you go back into the same hole and then pop out in a different location. So for now I'm just going to pop out up here, but we have enough that I can come across and do the other side. So that's what I got there for her eyelashes. So now you just got to match it on the other side. So with my same piece, um, I don't know, maybe it was about there. It's hard to judge. This is the hard part is just trying to get it even. So. I'm pretty sure that I came in about here. It's hard too if you don't sew your eyes on straight. So I'm going to go down the same hole and pop out where I want my second lash to be. Go down the same hole, pop out where I want my third lash to be. And then again, my third lash doesn't show up until I go back up. <laughs> Am I still on camera? So I go back down the same hole. I'm going to pop out where I started from, the same hole. So try not to pull tight. If you do pull too tight, just come over and pop it back out. Don't want any divots. So you just got to have to look and make sure that that's, oops, make sure that that's even, Steven. Yeah, it's not too bad. I do like to put a little gob of glue on the eyebrows just to keep it in place, but you don't have to do that. So I'm going to tie these two together. In a tight double knot. I'm going to cut it off, leave it a nubby, and I'm going to poke it down. So make sure you poke it way down because it's black. You certainly don't want to see it. And again, if you've just pop your head back out, <laughs> so everything is going to be distorted. Here we go. See my red on top? <laughs> well, it's supposed to hang down at the bottom, but anyway, that's that. And the last thing we got is the whiskers, so you can decide what color you want your whiskers. I think I got, I think I'm just going to do black for my whiskers because I've got the black 
eyebrows and that. Um, like I said, I like to just put a little bit of glue. It's invisible, so you don't see it to hold my eyebrows in place. And it's just such a little bit above the eyes, you won't even feel the hardness because when glue dries, it does get hard. But it's such a tiny space just above the eyes. I don't think anybody's fingers would even ever be there. But you never know. So get a piece of whatever color you're using for your whiskers. So we just cut this as we go just so we know what size we need. So I just got a little, big long piece again. Go in wherever you want your first set of whiskers to be. I think that's high. And then just pull through. Pull that down till that's about as long as you want your whiskers. Um, you don't want them just kind of hanging around too. Like you want them to stick up on their own. So I'm not going to go overly long with mine. But long enough. And then just cut it off. We'll do the second set. Uh, now, I didn't do this with my other one. I think I'm going to trim my other one down. The second set of whiskers always seems to be shorter. And that's mainly in cartoon characters or whatever. So just go down right below it. Pull that through. I'm going to make this one a little shorter. Like that. And then I'm going to make the last one a little longer. So there's nothing you can really do about, I think this one's a little longer. There's nothing you can really do about um, gluing these on or in or anything. So they're just going to have to just be. And that, my friends, is our ballerina bunny. Let me zoom out. Our ballerina bunny. So this is what I did. I just took the red, the plain red, and put it on the back like that. So some of the red does stick up. So you can see that through the white. There we go, our ballerina bunny. All I finished. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.